and I'll put the front motor mount on. Just maybe we can get through this video without being interrupted. Or maybe we'll only be interrupted once. I simply slid that screwdriver underneath the engine to hold it up so that the engine will settle correctly. Hang on, I just heard noise. I'll have to deal with that later, I guess. At any rate, I shoved the screwdriver under the engine block so that the motor mount. line up right instead of having to bite the, uh, the rubber mount. The rear engine mount has a little step to it. goes on like this, and it holds to the starter mount. If you're taking this tray off during a rebuild, make sure that the carburetor vent line is approximately 2 inches, 30 millimeters longer than the drain line for the float bowl. The 8 millimeter dowel pins looks like this. It goes on the starter bracket. This is the medium length. 
it goes on the bell housing and also between the case halves and then the longest one right here goes on the cylinder head and that's because it has to go through a head gasket as well which is rather thick so you have two of the medium length valve pins to go into this housing <coughs> The housing is held in place by five bolts. Incidentally, two of these bolts are longer than the other three. The two longer bolts go in the one o'clock position and the five o'clock position. That's because they go through the dowel pins. lifting up on it to make sure that I don't have the shop rag caught between the engine block and the end housing. wiring harness is held in place by two wire clips. Uh, we still have two minutes. We're at nine minutes now. Let's go ahead and end it there.